This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 1135 of Horse Tip Daily, your almost everyday morsel of helpful hints, useful facts, and practical techniques for horse folks. Brought to you today by Kentucky Performance Products. Hello, Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is an excerpt from the Pro Eventing Radio Show right here on Horse Radio Network. Show co-hosts Paul Tapner and Liz Halliday sharp talk about training each horse as an individual, right down to the way you ride them in competition. And we'll get to today's tip right after this from Kentucky Performance Products. He was her first love, the one that started it all. He taught her how to master the posting trot and navigate her first hunter course. They spent hours together exploring the trails and hanging out in the barn. His name was doodled on every page in her school notebook. His coat gleamed in the sun as he met her at the gate each day, snuffling for a treat. From the first time she saw him poking his head out of the stall to the last time she patted him goodbye, he was, and always will be, her everything. This love story is brought to you by Nalox Advanced, providing complete support for a healthy digestive tract, which reduces the risk of colic and digestive upset. The horse that matters to you matters to Kentucky Performance Products. Call 859-873-2974 or visit kppusa.com to order today. Now it's the host now interviewing the host because Liz, you... Um, had a very good Breitling Park International two-star win on the weekend. So congratulations, Liz. So. And um, a fortnight ago, we were talking uh, to, pe- to people that were coming out of um, Germany, having had lots of sub-40 dressages at the Moulin in both the three-star and the four-star. And we were all saying how jealous we are of these massive uh, improved dressage scores. Mm-hmm. And then this, you come out in the top class at Brightling in the UK on the, over the weekend, a 32, you almost smashed the 30 barrier. <laughs> and, you know, it was ridiculous. I actually saw the score and I had to look at it three times because I, at first I thought it was maybe a 52 and I was like, no, I'm going to be really upset if that's it. And I looked at it again and went, what? I mean, I, I don't know. Look, I mean, I didn't feel the test was good enough for that mark. I think his counter work was really, really good. He is a very big, flashy horse, so that helps. Um, he made a really big mistake in the test, to be fair, which was more, it wasn't really him being naughty. He's done a lot of three-star tests lately. And um, he's there was a move off in the new two-star test where you do a turn about the haunches and you pick up trot and he picked up counter, I think, just because he's so used to yeah, always picking the, up counter from the walk, exactly. you know, so it wasn't It, 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 it is wasn't slightly naughty. difficult if you've been doing three-star movements to then come back and do two-star movements. The horses are anticipating that extra element of difficulty and you do tend to, you know, they're more likely to make the mistakes like that. So is, is this a three-star horse that you were giving an easy run to or are you just training a level above what you're competing at? No, he is. I mean, this is the horse I took to Rolex this year. Um, he didn't have a very happy time at Rolex because it was extremely wet. Um, I think one of the wettest they've ever had. And I was five from the end in his first four star. So it was um, it was difficult. He actually ended up slipping over on the flat and lost his back end. And I fell off, which was an unfortunate end to um, to our first four star attempt. But um, he came out really strong at Rockingham Castle when I first came back to the UK. He won the intermediate there, which was just sort of a let's see where we're at. And this has been his first full run since then. So I'm just trying to, this is a horse that needs, he needs some happy runs in between what he does. He's a horse I've had to put a lot of time into. He didn't have the best cross country record when I got him three years ago. And he is extremely talented. He's got plenty of ability for the top level. So this is, this was a confidence rebuilding exercise or a confidence building up exercise ready for the next big test. You know, you you, you said, mentioned you didn't have a good first four star. So the second attempt at four star is is looming soon. Well, I think my plan is he's going to do the advanced at Aston and then go to Hartbury three star. He ran well there last year and it's an event I like a lot. And then we'll aim for Blenheim, I think. And, um, if he goes well at Blenheim, I might go to Poe because he is a horse that suits having a couple runs fairly close-ish together. He did Blair and then Buccalo last year, and he ran really well at Buccalo. So um, I'm kind of playing it by ear, but I think the horse will 
go well at Rolex next year, hopefully. That would be our goal. And just trying to make sure I sort of take each step the right way with him. I see. So the it's very much about managing his confidence or um, something of the kind for the cross country phase with this horse. You know, obviously we said the dressage is very obviously very capable in there, uh, but the jumping and you mentioned the, the the rider that had him beforehand uh, was struggling across country with him. Yeah, I mean he he was owned by an amateur for quite a few years. I think she had him for three years, and uh, he had a lot of blips on his record. He sort of had flashes of brilliance and then had a few mistakes. Uh, he's he's always been a fantastic jumper. I mean, he's pretty much not going to have a rail down unless I get something seriously wrong, which is a nice feeling. And we have a good partnership now that way. And um, he is very good cross country as long as everything makes sense and it's, you know, all the way he thinks it should be. And you've kind of gotten everything perfect. <laughs> he's getting better. He is getting a lot better. And, and he is a good cross country horse. He's just, uh, he just needs to be kept in that happy place, if you know what I mean. So I do tend to drop him down and move him up. And it just seems to give him that little boost if he's had a really great run and he's run fast around an easier track. It, it does just keep him happier. Yeah, I quite often talk to people about this with the, with the horses, that we have to treat them as individuals. And not only in terms of physicality, they're all different shapes and sizes, but mentality as well. Some horses you know, really need to run fast the whole time to get their bravery. Some horses, if you run them fast the whole time, you just lose control and you run past every single jump. And, and so you run them slow most of the time and only run them fast at the major competitions. So it's very much about managing. So this would be your tactic with this horse that you have developed, but not every other horse that you ride. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. I have one in my barn right now that if I ran him fast all the time, I would literally run past everything. <laughs> Blackie is not really like that. He's a he's a very nice person and he's he's a lovely horse and he wants to make you happy, but he's he's a big, big horse. He's 17-1 full up and, and quite a bendy horse. So it's tricky, you know, turning to skinnies and that sort of thing. So I do a lot of training, more focusing on that. And then I think for him, it, you're better to come out attacking the course. I wouldn't say I run him super fast all the time, but I would run with a bit more purpose than maybe some of my horses. And that does seem to suit his brain. He sort of takes it on a little bit more. Um, it's a way I had to start riding him when I first got him because he, he, you know, he, he had a lot of things we had to work through on cross country. But I do believe he's a world class horse. And he's definitely, in my opinion, he's definitely a four star horse. And I think he's just, is just going to have to keep taking time and work on our training. and keep heading the right way indeed yeah it's all about uh keep the momentum going the correct way and like you say we, some horses uh, you have to run fast some horses you, you don't like every, I, I used to always get asked about i know nothing what why are you running this horse so fast at every single one day event you do and i was like because it's terrifying if i don't he is such an <laughs> unbrave horse he he gets terrified if he's not galloping at something he, do, he doesn't think he can do it unless he's galloping flat out so um you know it would terrify the both of us if we just tried to cant around some of these big tracks because he was he was so small and actually lacking in scope that he needed that speed for his bravery and and uh, also his ability so yeah it's really interesting to see how you can have such amazingly different horses but we all as riders have a belief in them that they will make these four-star horses well there you have it you can find links to today's guests and lots more tips at horsetipdaily.com Make sure you have all of your favorite Horse Radio Network shows with you wherever you go by downloading the free Horse Radio Network app for iPhone or Android. Just go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network, and you can also subscribe via iTunes. This podcast was made possible through the generous support of Kentucky Performance Products and listeners like you. You can learn how to become a supporter of the Horse Radio Network programming and qualify for special perks by going to horsetipdaily.com and clicking on the Become an Auditor banner in the center of the page. This is Coach Jen, and I'll be back soon with another tip. So, in the meantime, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. (laughs) 